Two of my papers were recently peer-reviewed and accepted for publication at the 2010 Asian chapter of the IEEE, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. The conference was hosted at the Harbor Plaza Resort City in Hong Kong. As a result, the IEEE invited me to this imposing city to present my theories. So we traveled to the true capital of China. And became acquainted with its people and its culture. As you can imagine, we took our visit to China very seriously. Well, not entirely. Now China is a communist country, and we wanted to experience what it is like to be a socialist proletarian. So we didn't stay at any of the high-class Chinese hotel chains, such as the Sheraton, the Intercontinental, or the Holiday Inn. We decided to tough it out at the world-famous Chungking Mansions. As expected, our room turned out to be a dwelling for a typical Chinese family of ten. We had four walls, two beds, and a flushable toilet. The room even came with a small beer box. Chinese beer Well, not everything is perfect in a communist country As you probably already know In a communist regime like China's everything is prohibited Nothing is allowed You can't ride your bike or your skateboard You can't spit or gamble, or even wait for someone. Eating and drinking are strictly prohibited, as is leaving the country. Don't even try to sneak out by kite. In China, it is illegal to have babies, or to be gay. You're not even allowed to dry your own clothes or do any of the daily things allowed in a capitalist country. The state controls so many aspects of daily life that it even tells you in which direction you should walk and which way to look. Everybody has to march at the beat of the same drum. In China, all private economic initiative is stifled, discouraged, and barred. Also prohibited are all forms of religion. Security is tight. Police forces are everywhere. Cops lurk in every corner, hiding behind flagpoles, always on the lookout, always vigilant, stopping you at every turn. The government even films you when you go up the elevator. And the penalties are great if you break the rules, but it is perhaps as a result of all these personal restrictions that some things are free, and others very cheap. Well, you can get a Rolex watch 
for about a hundred bucks and a designer shirt for 20. State intervention has been so successful that the excesses of uncontrolled laissez-faire capitalism, the famous gaps between rich and poor, have been entirely eliminated. In China, I was finally able to feel just like everyone else. Now one thing that China is famous for is people. China has lots of people. People, people, and still more people. You see people everywhere. That's probably why they call it a people's republic. Some wear funny hats. Others have strange customs, like making handprints in fresh cement, and playing weird indoor board games in the middle of the street. Yet others laugh for reasons that no one can figure out. <laughs> Some Chinese fight with shadows in broad daylight. Indeed, they stand so still that they look like statues and it became painfully obvious that most Chinese apparently don't understand Westerners. I bought some local takeout and asked for a fork. Instead, they gave me two enormous toothpicks. Now how was I supposed to get the residuals from between my teeth with these logs? But never underestimate the Chinese. They are intelligent and wise. Millions of them have now voted with their feet. The Chinese have unequivocally denounced and renounced the religion of mathematical physics. All over China, the masses have cast their votes and categorically rejected the followers of Stephen Hawking. No Hawking! In fact, in China, it is a crime to be associated with Hawking's religion. No hawking. The verdict of the world is conclusive. No hawking. 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 All rational individuals should place it as a bumper sticker on their cars. So what are you waiting for? One more time. No hawking. One more time. No hawking. <laughs> <laughs>